Hi, welcome back to Coding Over 40. This is Patricia. It's been about two weeks since I posted my intro video on YouTube. Um, and the significance of me mentioning that is because eventually I hope that this video diary I'm recording um, will start to catch up to my process in real time and that I can start chatting back and forth with people and um, maybe get some resources from you guys and some of your challenges and some of the things you can do to help me move along in this process. With that said, I think the next logical step to discuss today is the equipment that you'll need to begin learning to code. So um, when I started this, I actually had promised myself that I would do this completely for free. Um, that would include, you know, not going back to school. I've already got several degrees that I'm not using at all, but I'm paying for with the student loans and <clears throat> not purchasing equipment, um, not paying for uh, tutors or anything like that. So all of that went really well when I started meetups and I saw my online resources like Code Academy, Khan Academy, Code School, GA, um, GA Dash, Eloquent Java. Um, and then all of a sudden I realized that I had no equipment to do this work on. So um, I was using my work Dell laptop. It was a Latitude. Um, I think it was like a Series 6100. I apologize. I'm not a PC user, um, so I'm not that well versed on those. But basically, this machine was about at the time eight years old. And um, I, in the midst of learning um, Objective C and basically learning how to create an iOS application, the Xcode would crash probably, I would say, about every 15 minutes. And I realized that this was not going to happen without um, a more up-to-date machine. At the time, I had a 2003 iMac, which obviously was not um, going to cut it. And I think that machine, in general, was a glorified jukebox and kind of a photo album. So. That wasn't going to work, and then I had this work laptop that obviously wasn't going to work either, so I consigned myself to needing to purchase um, a new Mac, and I decided on the MacBook Air. Um, I liked the battery life at the time, as well as um, the fact that it could do everything a pro could do, but it was about $400, $500 less brand new. I didn't have any money, so I didn't know how I was going to do this. Um, so I looked online, I didn't see a lot of resources or a lot of good advice, and so what I ended up doing, which I do not recommend, but if you were like me and you don't have any extra income or you don't have disposable income, um, I took out a loan, like one of those payday loan thingies, and um, made sure I took off or took out that loan in a time where I would pay it back in less than a month, so I paid about $100 in interest, so it still worked out to be less money purchasing this Mac um, through eBay than it, with the loan than it would have been if I purchased it brand new. Not by much, but I saved about oh, $150. So some of the resources that you can go through um, <clears throat> that aren't going to cost you a, an arm and a leg is you can ask if you have a friend who um, can lend you a Mac, uh, you know, or a, a PC or a laptop. Um, a lot of people that I work with have a work Mac and then they have their home Macs and they never have even opened up their work Mac. Wish I would have thought of that, but at the time I didn't think about it because I didn't know. But now you know because I'm giving you that resource. So ask a friend. I would start with that. Also check and see if you have a computer lab or access to a computer lab. I know here in San Francisco and some of the larger cities um, there are startup and entrepreneurial um, kind of pop-up uh, study areas where you can go and they have a computer lab there. The only problem with that is if you have a day job and you can only code during certain hours like after work or on the weekends, um, this isn't going to offer you the flexibility to do that. You're going to have to do it on their time or when you can sign up. And then lastly, if you're strapped for cash but you know you can come up with say $500, $600, um, you can go the Mac Mini route. I think right now at the time last year when I was looking at Mac Minis, they were about $500, but I think now you can get them for $400 or less because I think they're about ready to push out a new one. And that would be just fine to do 
the types of code projects that you'll want to do um, when you first start out. So um, again, I do not recommend taking out a loan from a payday loan place like I did. I just had no other choice. So just so you know, it's doable. I did it. I'm not embarrassed to say I did. It was a horrible um, idea, but that was the only choice I was left with. Um, so yeah, that's the first piece of equipment you are going to need. There's no way conveniently that you can do this for free unless you <clears throat> have a lot of time and can go to a lab, you know, or you've got a gracious friend who has an extra Mac or an extra laptop lying around for you. Um, the second thing I did that I thought was really important, and I actually just recently did this, and I wish I had done this earlier to keep me on track, was um, to start a Trello account. So Trello or Asana or some sort of um, account that keeps you uh, accountable for your goals based on deadlines, and you can kind of see it all there. Um, on the computer. You could go the old-fashioned route of just keeping a notebook and having a to-do list. I have no problem with that. I actually do that every day at work. Um, this actually, for me to have the Trello account was really good because I could add my mentors to it so that they could add things to the list of um, goals that I needed to meet or they could um, you know, share resources with me um, and that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend some sort of organizational tool um, it, Again, whether it be just paper and pen, that's totally fine, or setting up Trello or Asana. And then lastly, I think I spoke about this in my last video in the intro, um, really try to find a mentor, somebody that can keep you on track, somebody that can answer questions that are relevant to what you're going through, um, and you know, somebody preferably who has the time to keep you on track and to kind of mentor you basically for lack of a better way of putting it. So yes, those are my recommendations for the second portion of what you'll need to do to start this coding over 40 or coding for anybody really, but coding over 40. Go and find yourself a good machine, um, get a great organizational tool either online or old school, and lastly find a mentor. Okay, so talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.